Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brian Wilfong. I'm the Public Relations and Marketing Coordinator here at SeaTech of Licking County. This is our second summer Zoom session. Um, we had our first one transitioning to SeaTech um, last week. Uh, we have two more that are coming up at the end of the summer, and we'll talk about those at the end. But today's focus is on guidance and scheduling at SeaTech. Um, and I am joined by four of our guests. Uh, our first one is uh, Ryan Wheeler, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Ryan Wheeler, and I'm one of the guidance counselors at SeaTech. I am over um, the um, culinary arts, criminal justice, um, clinical care, dental, fire, medical assisting, and physical therapy programs at SeaTech. Excellent. And our other guidance counselor who is with us is Michelle McNeely. Hi, I'm Michelle. I am uh, over all the industrial trades programs. So that is auto collision, auto tech, diesel, um, robotics, um, computers, digital design, um, electricity, welding, and architecture. Excellent. Uh, we are also joined by one of our assistant directors, Mike McNichol. Good afternoon. My name is Mike McNichol. I'm one of the assistant directors at SeaTech. Uh, my responsibilities um, align more with guidance, um, and supervision of academics, um, and testing. Excellent. And finally, our career development coordinator, Alyssa Johnston. Hello again, everyone. Excellent. So today's focus, again, is going to be on guidance and scheduling as it pertains to incoming juniors. Some questions will, um, will be relevant for um, incoming seniors, so hopefully we'll answer uh, some of the questions you've submitted to us. So we're gonna jump right in. And our first one um, is just a pretty simple one. Can you give us an overview of how scheduling um, for incoming juniors looks? How does that beginning of the year process play out for juniors? Michelle, I'll take this one. <laughs> um, scheduling um, for incoming juniors, we work very closely with the homeschool counselors. Um, part of the application process, the homeschool counselors give math recommendations. Um, CTEC, because they're in lab um, for a big portion of their day, um, we work with their homeschool counselors to make sure they're getting the academic courses to keep them on track for graduation. Um, we do offer the government um, sciences, math, and English. So we make sure that they're staying on track. Um, and um, also during that application process and several different surveys have gone out to students, if they've expressed interest in some of our CCP or AP courses, um, we will work with um, them to get them in those courses and make sure that they're eligible. So do incoming students select their own courses or is that done for them? Typically it's done for them. Um, they can, again, in the surveys, express interest in like if they want composition for a CCP course. Um, we've gone through that list and we will work with the college then to see if they're eligible and then kind of walk them through the application process and get them in that course. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of like example, my medical programs, they'll get two sciences. Um, and it goes along with um, preparing them for their final credential testing. So a lot of my uh, medical programs will get anatomy their junior year and chemistry their senior year, just to work hand in hand with um, their programs. Excellent, good deal. And so when will students get their schedules? Because we get that question a lot. Um, at registration, typically um, that's held the first week of August and we don't know what's coming up for this August, but typically they get their course um, request. And then the first day of school is when they actually get their schedule and we walk them through so that they can find everything. Okay. All right, excellent. And so I'm a student, I get my schedule and I need to change it. Something's incorrect or there's something there I don't need. How does that process work? Michelle, you wanna take that one? Sure. Um, typically we ask students to give us the first couple days of school. However, if they're missing a period um, and they don't have a class, we ask them to come to the guidance office. Um, typically we'll go over the schedules with them in an orientation session and have everybody make sure that they have the appropriate classes. But if they don't, they just need to come down to the guidance office and schedule an appointment. Okay, but that happens within the first couple of weeks. Of that happens the first couple of days of school, yes. Excellent, all right. So but we do want to point out that it is the student's responsibility to make sure they let us know if they did take summer school courses that we don't know about, because we might not have those transcripts by the time um, that school starts. So if they took a science or a math or something different in summer school, they need to let us know that. Great point. Thank you. So uh, Ryan alluded to this, you know, I've, I'm a student, I've requested CCP. What are the next steps? Like, is there anything that the student needs to do before school starts after they've made that request? 
Um, at this point, in regards to CCP, because we also offer um, some of our programs are CCP as well, um, we will be sending out information for um, CCP registration on how to, for example, if we use COTC for composition, um, typically we will walk the students through that registration pro um, process. Um, but we um, have sent out emails in the past with the how to um, apply um, for our programs as well. So we will, we will walk the th students through that application process. Then Michelle and I will be working very closely with the um, college to make sure that they get the transcripts and get everything that they need to get them eligible for the course. But we also need to make sure that they know that they're responsible for notifying us if they um, want to take a course that's above and beyond what we offer at CTAC. Because um, otherwise we won't know and we need to get them their textbooks and all that stuff. So they have to notify us as soon as they can. Excellent. And, and they can notify you of that this summer, Michelle, if they... Yep. Yeah, they can email us. Yep, absolutely. Email would be great. Yes. And the links to their emails are on the website on the guidance page, uh, along with a lot of this information and what programs that uh, Michelle and Ryan are responsible for. Um, and just CCP, in case anyone doesn't know, is College Credit Plus. Um, sometimes we get into alphabet soup. Um, AP and other options. Again, you've, you've mentioned this. Do we offer AP at CTEC? Um, and is it too late to sign up for it if you're interested? We do currently offer AP. We offer um, AP Calculus and AP Government is what we're offering so far this year. Um, when students apply, they express interest in that. However, like we said, if the first day of school comes and they're not in the appropriate class or they want to try an AP course, they can just let us know. We can see if we can fit it in our schedule. But just so you know, for juniors, most of the AP courses are scheduled on our master schedule for, to fit senior schedules. So we can't guarantee that you'll have it as a junior, but we can get it for you as a senior. Excellent. That's a good, a good point. Thank you. So we've talked about a lot of our advanced options. What if I need remedial or extra help um, and I'm coming to CTEC? What are, what are some of the options available there or how does that process work? Um, so students that if they need some additional credit recovery courses, again, we work very closely with all of the homeschool counselors. Some homeschools do offer credit recovery, um, so we can help get the student linked with the appropriate person through the homeschool. Um, we do offer resources then for TRECA for students that are interested in that. So if they do think that they need something, if they want to send us an email now. Um, but Michelle and I will also be within the first few weeks of school going out and meeting with every student, um, reviewing their transcript, making Making sure that the transcript is correct and if we're missing anything we will provide that information at that time. Oh excellent okay good deal. Uh, so something that uh, we've had quite a few people ask us about and we're actually pretty proud of at CTEC it's a great resource is our facts lab. Um, how does that play into a student's academic life and what is it? Well typically uh, students really aren't scheduled into the facts lab unless there is a reason for them to be scheduled into there such as credit recovery or um, they need a course that their home school didn't offer or what they will actually schedule a student in there. Sometimes if a student has placed outside of our courses like outside of our math um, we will let them take a college course um, online and they can be scheduled into the facts lab. But the uh, most wonderful and viable thing, the Facts Lab, I believe is for is for tutoring. If a student has um, needs extra help, um, if they're struggling with a course, we have wonderful tutors in there that they can um, either come to us and request for, um, for help in there and we will get them connected or they can talk to their teachers or they can just stop in and talk to Ms. Hummel. Okay, and, and what is the Facts Lab? The Facts Lab is a computer lab basically, but it also has individual study rooms and study tables that there's a bunch of tutors in there that they can help you with your different subjects. Gotcha. Yeah, and we should mention we have tutors for all of the academic subjects who are at CTEC every day. Um, so it's a really great resource for students. And I, and I will point out it's also for um, students who um, are um, allowed additional help and additional time and stuff on taking tests. Um, that's where they would go um, to get those accommodations met. Okay, excellent. Uh, anything else about the Facts Lab or can we, are we good? All right, so uh, this is a question. Sometimes people get confused about this. Do I graduate, if I'm a senior, do I graduate from CTEC? Where do I graduate from? You, a student will receive their diploma from their home school. That is where they graduate from. And again, we work very closely with all the counselors. They come over and talk to their students with us um, several times throughout the year just to make sure every student is on track to get that diploma through their homeschool. 
So my junior and senior year, though, I'm taking all of my courses at CTEC. CTEC will provide the academic courses I need. I don't have to keep looking back at Utica or Lakewood or wherever. That is correct. We will, again, make sure that they're getting all the courses that they need to stay on track for graduation. So I, I graduated from my home school and I attended CTEC junior and senior year. It's four years down the road and I need a transcript. Who do I ask for that? Um, in regards to final transcripts, um, we provide and send them to colleges or any requested right after the student graduates. If it's a year, several years later, then we would refer them back to their home school to get that final transcript. The transcript is a combined transcript. It will show all four years, including CTEC. Okay, brilliant. Um, so do any of our juniors, do any of our junior courses have summer assignments? And if so, how do they find that out? The only ones that would possibly have summer assignments that I'm aware of, and Mike, you might need to uh, fill me in more on this, but would be any of the AP courses. Sometimes they have summer assignments, but like we said, we don't really know what's happening next year, so I don't necessarily think those have been sent out yet. Mr. McNichol? No, I agree. I think you're right. Um, some schools, um, there is there are additional assignments to go along with the AP classes. Um, we're a little bit of a unique situation because we're only able to offer the AP classes based upon enrollment and interest. Um, so at this point, we're planning on offering the classes, um, but there, there are no summer assignments associated with those classes. Okay. Um, and I, we have touched on this, but just to reiterate, we do offer all of the academic classes that a student would need to graduate, um, yes. that they are required of them their junior and senior year. Yeah, and yeah. I actually wanted to point out too, here's a good, uh, spot to put it in that if a student does want to take additional coursework in order to get the um, diploma with honors um, they are allowed to do that a lot of programs do have extra periods in which we could put them in an extra class if it's available um, mm -hmm. they can also take online courses or college credit plus courses if they would like in order to get that diploma with honors but once again it's up to them to notify us to let us know if that's something they're interested in okay Excellent. Um, we've talked about this a, a lot, but I guess kind of I'll give you a chance to fill in any gaps. How does the guidance department help me as I prepare for work and or college? What are some of the resources that are available through the guidance department? We offer a lot of different resources um, with academic, social, emotional, all of that. Um, in regards to work and um, college, we have offered some work sessions for students to come in uh, maybe in the fall and work through with us there um, to go through applications. We've also hosted um, the Licking County Foundation to come in and offer it to students to come in and work through that application process just to have that extra support. Um, we post um, any scholarships that come in um, outside of our office so that that resource is always there and available to students. We also work very closely with um, our work coordinator, um, Vicki Reed, um, and she posts a lot of employment um, opportunities also near the guidance office. Um, we've done mock interviews. We've done a lot of different resources to help students feel comfortable um, to moving on to that next step. Excellent. So uh, what are some additional ways that I as a student or a parent might interact with you? Like we've talked a lot about scheduling and and the academic side, what's the other side of the guidance department? Well, we have an open door policy, so we love it when students stop in and just say hi. It's always nice to see their smiling faces. Um, parents can call and email us anytime. Um, like I said, we have an open door policy. They can come in and, and have a meeting. We can talk about college. We can talk about personal social issues, um, anything that's affecting the student right now. We do have uh, resources listed on our website of different um, things about careers, about college, about personal social issues. So those are some ways. Um, Ryan and I are out and about as much as we can in the school too. We like to step into the lab. So, um, but yeah, I mean, anytime they just want to say hi, we would love it. We also have coffee with the counselors, which we brought back this year, which is uh, once a month in the cafeteria, we'll have provide you with a bunch of caffeine and coffee and you can come <laughs> sit with us and chat and it's awesome. Excellent. So, so it's not unusual, you know, for a parent to call and say, I'm really worried about Johnny, his head's in the clouds, and, you know, he's still got a semester left. I mean, that's not an atypical experience for you. No, we actually love that and encourage that. We love for parents to contact us because that means we're on the same page and working together to get the kids graduated. Excellent. Hey, Brian, and if I could, if I could interject also on that one, 
Um, and I, when I have conversations with parents, I, I, I always say this, um, um, Ryan and Michelle are tremendous resources. Um, and as students are transitioning to a new school for one, um, and we do have a lot of unknowns, it can create a lot of anxiety, um, a lot of stress um, for the students who might be coming to the building and for students that are already here. Um, so as parents, um, I think it's important that they, will, they, they are a tremendous resource for you as a parent. Um, and, and just to help with that adjustment and deal with some of those social emotional issues um, that may be going on. Um, so I would encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, and, I, and I say that as a parent of two, of two high school graduates, I, I think they're, um, if you have questions, I think they're a tremendous resource and they can provide a great deal of guidance to you. Brian, I also want to share that we do, and we're very proud of our SeaTech pantry. It's called Ripken's Dish. That's another support that we can offer families because we know there's difficult times, um, but that is another resource that is, um, again, available to families and students. It's confidential. They just come in and see Michelle and I, and we'll get them the support that they need in regards to that. And I would like to say that our guidance department, I think, is really good about looking at the socioeconomic needs of a lot of our students. You guys are, are really generous with holiday time, trying to make sure that kids are getting basic necessities and, and things like that. Um, you, what was it that you did during the COVID shutdown, Michelle? There were the bags that you packed? Oh yeah, we, um, we uh, actually, I went and pretty much raided the pantry. So if anybody wants to donate there, we will <laughs> definitely accept donations. But um, that and with the help of um, some staff members, we made uh, 25 gift bags. Um, to take out to 25 different families and delivered them with uh, personal supplies, with food, with all that stuff, plus tons of other um, stuff that we could give out to families that needed help. Yeah, I, you guys are very, very good at that. Uh, treating the whole person. Um, sometimes we can get caught in, you know, just the scheduling and the, the academic side of it. And there's, there are people behind all of those schedules and those transcripts and whatnot. Right. So uh, and CTEC, I think does a good job of recognizing that. Um, so kudos for that. Um, Alyssa, uh, can you kind of give us a brief demo on how parent students can locate uniform and fee information for the following year? Absolutely. Um, we are receiving lots of requests um, via the Google form. So thank you for submitting those. Many of them are about uniforms and fees. So I wanna show you a couple resources that you can utilize um, to get that information as well course is emailing um, and asking about the questions that you have. But I'm going to take a second to share my screen, if it will let me. Um, my, the host has not allowed me to share my screen, so. <laughs> uh, hmm. I will, I'm going to explain some things, but Brian, if you want to share your screen um, and just take direct us to the website. Mm -hmm. um, I did originally send the uniform and fee information on May 13th by program. So you should have received an email from me. I think some people it may have directed to um, spam or um, junk mail. So if you can't find it, you can check there. Email me. I will be happy to share those links again, but they can also be found on our website. Um, now, most of this information is tentative, so um, board approval usually happens in July for our fees and uniform information, um, and we have extended our uniform deadline to order till August. We're going to be really flexible in the fall um, as students start coming back and what that looks like and, and allowing them to get their uniform. So. Um, the biggest question I think I'm getting is where to purchase scrubs. We do not, um, I don't believe any of our programs have a, a website that you have to go to to order your scrubs. They, they direct you in the color that you will need um, and uh, some styling concerns, but there is not a specific company that you have to use. I know um, several of our Instructors have shared that they use a place called Emlays in Zanesville. Um, if you want to go try on scrubs, or there's a scrub shop in Reynoldsburg next to um, in the strip mall with Walmart. 
um, off 256. So those are a couple resources, but you could order them anywhere. Walmart, um, any site you find online, it, they just need to match the color. Um, so Brian's directing us onto the website. Um, he's, he's shown one place where you can find all programs um, listed here in a giant document, but they are also on the program pages. So if you go to high school, CTEC high school programs, um, you're going to find a list of programs. And if you are in electrical trades, you would click that lab, scroll to the bottom of the page, and you will see a tab that says program fees and uniform. Um, and there is going to be a link with the tentative information. So um, for electrical trades, there's a tentative fee sheet for junior year, for senior year, um, and then the order form for our juniors for the, um, their uniform, and then dress code policies. So those dress code policies are where you're going to find information about what color scrubs to order or um, teaching careers, for example, you can buy any khaki or black pants that you'd like um, from anywhere. So there's not an order form for those. If you have questions about this, you can certainly refer to our website or email and I will be happy to direct you um, to the instructor or the administrator if I can't answer the question. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't realize that you guys are not set up to screen share. So anyway, as they were talking, I was also kind of guiding people through the website from the landing page to the high school and then all of the individual sub pages that we have. So um, that should take care of it. Uh, is there anything else uh, you folks want to address before we end this Zoom? I'm just looking forward to being back in the building with students. <laughs> And I just want to say too that we understand that it's going to be, it's nervous starting over a new school when you're in 10th grade um, or even coming back as a senior. So just know that we are always here and we have tons of resources to help you. We joke, the guidance office is the one stop shop for announcements, for fruit <laughs> lunches, for copies, for whatever it is. So band aids. <laughs> so um, stop in if you guys need anything. Excellent, excellent. And we should say that this is all the things we've talked about are typically how the process works. Right. Um, we are going to um, hope for the best and plan for the worst, but uh, we're, we're going to act right now like August is going to be normal uh, and hopefully it will be, right? Um, positive vibes. But regardless, these services will be offered in some manner, no matter what next year looks like. So, And, and with that, we do have an August um, one of these Zoom sessions planned to update you with the latest information. It will be August before we know anything for sure. So um, hang tight. I know it's a tough time, but tune in in August and we will share um, everything that we know at that time about starting the new year for juniors and seniors and how we're gonna move forward. Yeah, we, are, we aren't holding any secrets. We aren't keeping any secrets. Uh, once we know, we will be sure to tell you. Um, and uh, as Alyssa mentioned, we have two more Zooms coming up. July 22nd, uh, we'll have um, a Zoom where we'll talk about extracurricular involvement, what that looks like at CTEC and at your home school. Um, and then August 5th, um, the first days at CTEC for 2020, what those will look like. So Ryan, Michelle, Mike, Alyssa, thank you. This has been really informative. You guys are great. Um, and we hope that we've answered your questions. And if we haven't, all of the information is right there on the website. Feel free to drop any of us a line and we will get that information to you. So thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.